Hey everybody, welcome back to another great Renderosity tutorial on Poser 10 and Poser Pro 2014. I'm Mark Bremer, and in this movie we are going to get into some very cool aspects of Poser, and that has to do with rigging hard edge objects. There are so many objects you can download uh, for free online, uh, especially buildings and things like that, vehicles, as well as things that you can buy right here at Renderosity that may or may not have been rigged to easily pose inside the program. By the conclusion of this tutorial, you'll be able to go ahead and bring in pre-built content that is not posed and make it poseable inside of Poser. And then we'll also look at creating custom morph targets to create some really sophisticated types of posing behavior, not necessarily for animations, although you can use it that way, but it just makes your life a lot easier to use the same asset over and over as you work with it. Now, as we get started, word to the warning whenever, or word to the wise, I should say, when you are creating a posable object, don't do it in the scene that you're going to ultimately use it in. Create separate standalone files that allow you to go ahead and save the object into the poser library or that allow you to import the object later on when you're working with a larger scene. It's just me being paranoid, but uh, it has served me well. So we've got an empty scene, and to state the obvious, I'm going to show you the hierarchy editor. All we have in the scene is ground. The reason I'm bringing this up is because when we import an object, it's going to come in as a prop. That's not really how Poser thinks when we start posing it. Poser will convert it into a figure, just like a human being. So all of a sudden we'll get this cascade of stuff as we start posing. And I just want to make you aware of that so that as we get back into it, you'll kind of see what's going on. Let's come down to File, Import. And I happen to have a Wavefront OBJ file, but of course you can import any of these other formats as well. And a little important item as well. This place on floor checkbox, it's usually a good idea to check that. It saves you some extra work later on. And since I'm uh, lazy or efficient, well, it seems like a good idea. I'm importing an aircraft hangar. Nothing super remarkable. It's pretty simple geometry. But uh, wow, this side's really dark. Let me add a light in here and make life a little bit uh, easier. OK. Pull this around to the side. There, now we can see that. OK. So what we're going to do is animate this large overhead door. And we're going to animate uh, this single door right here. We'll also be creating a morph adjustment for this door. So we're going to make it do some really fun things that maybe a door wouldn't do. But you'll get the idea of how you can apply this later on. This is a single swinging door. But we can create something that would be like for a bifold door. If this door was only half the length and it folded into a little triangle as it went up, you can do all that stuff with these rigging tools. So let's get going. Again, for the hierarchy window, just to take a look at that. Here we are with a pre-named air hanger, and uh, that's going to change very quickly as we get into it. So let me select the object, and we'll come up to the Setup tab. It's going to ask you, you sure you want to do this? Because it's a one-way trip. But once you do this, you can't go back and turn it back into a prop. It's going to behave as a figure, and the answer is yes. But that is an important distinction. So inside the setup room here, we've got some areas that you're familiar with by appearance and some new ones. The joint editor is the biggest one we'll be working with to make sure that as we create bones for this, and bones is how you pose a figure. So even though we're working with a hard edge object, yeah, we're going to have to work with bones with it and use some of these tools. Also the editing tools, while they are very familiar, they perform very differently inside of the setup room. They only affect the bones themselves. Inside the setup room, you can't manipulate objects. You can't adjust your scene. You can't do any of that. This is a very dedicated space to simply create a bone rig for whatever object it is you have selected. Now, over here in our hierarchy editor, we see we've got the ground prop, the air hanger prop, but now we've got something called figure two which is how Poser is starting to think about this air hanger as we create bones for it. Right now all it has is a center of mass, that type of stuff. There are no bones, and that's what we're going to fix right now. So important to note that when you work with bones, the best method for that is to go ahead and do it in a planar view. Not at an angle like this, because you'll start creating just weird constructions that uh, are 
well, you can't work with them. So by planar view, I mean like left camera, right camera, top, that type of thing, because it centers the bones on the axis for the scene. You'll also notice there's this kind of green plus sign and a red plus sign. Right now, with the object with no bones, these are the origin indicators. If I had brought in this object right here without saying put on the floor, it would have centered on this green plus sign right here, which is the root bone, if you will, although we don't see a bone, but it would have centered on that space. So that's why I suggested to go ahead and have that sit on the floor. All right, let's switch to a left view. Camera view, left. And let me move up here, and we've got a lot of stuff. Let me make this a little easier to see. There we go. We can see the small door on the far side, and obviously the large door. I'm going to draw three bones here, and it's just kind of the best method that I like to use. The reason for it is it, well, poser is a little more predictable when I do it. We are going to create a skeleton hierarchy, just like you do for a figure, even though we're only going to have three bones. The first one I'm going to draw is the equivalent of the hip bone inside of uh, a regular character. And I need to mention the next movie that comes up is going to deal with uh, rigging bipedal characters, so we will get into that. So the new tool we have in the setup room is the bone creation tool. So I'm going to click on that and you want to begin drawing with it or click and dragging with it where you want the bones base to be. So I'm going to kind of pick the center of the building and simply click straight up. Now automatically when I draw a bone again the program is going to connect it to this bone and create a tree or what could be used as an inverse kinematics tree. I'm going to come over to this overhead door and click and drag. So we have two bones and you can see this main bone right here has kind of leaned over and connected. We're going to change that in just a minute but I'll leave it there for right now. I'm going to come back and reselect this bone and it highlights. Now the reason I'm doing this is because the next bone I draw is going to be for this small door. I don't want it connected to the end of this bone right here which would happen automatically just like it did when I drew the bone for the overhead door to the main hip bone. The reason being is that when the door animates, any bone that's connected to this would also animate, so the side door would be doing something when the overhead door functions. Don't want that. With the main bone selected right here, when I draw another bone, it's going to connect straight back to that instead of the tip of the overhead door bone. Important little distinction. So I'll just click and drag. And now what we'll do, we can see these little origin markers here. The green is for the base where all the rotation takes place, and then the red is the tip of the bone. We can move some of these things around now. I'm going to come back to my translate tool and select this main bone. You can see the red marker over here, and as I move my cursor over that, it turns into a little bullseye. That lets me know that I can click and drag this, and uh, we'll just make this go straight up and down. Don't have to be perfect with this one. But now you see these little lines that show me that these other two bones are connected to this main skeleton bone. Okay, great. Now let's uh, change orientation and go to the top view and get these things lined up a little bit where they need to be lined up. Come back to top camera. Now everything has been lined up on the z-axis right here. So this bone right here for the small door, I want to be able to go ahead and drag right over to the door and we'll readjust that in a little bit. So it's just, I know the height is okay, and then we'll want to get this very specifically aligned to the door. This green plus sign is where the door is going to rotate from. So if this is offset from the door, the door is going to get this weird swing to it and swing way out. So if I choose, I can kind of zoom in on this right now. And we'll maybe uh, save ourselves a little bit of a headache here. But with this selected, I'm going to click and line up this green plus sign for what I think is the edge of the door, one of the edges. I don't know that there's a door handle. We'll just make it open up where we want it to. The end determination right here, I can move this if I want to. I'm not really going to touch it right now. I don't frankly care that it's beyond the door. It's not going to influence anything else differently there. Okay, with that done, we can see that we've got this large bone for the overhead door. And that was centered, well, maybe it's not centered. Let me go back to the left view real quick. And we'll make sure this gets centered on there. I'll select this bone. 
and we can see that maybe there's a little bit of an angle going on here. This is where I come up to the joint editor and go, what's going on here? Sure enough, there is an angle to it, and something moves a little bit when I move that, that root type of hip bone. So on the X rotation, we're looking right down the X axis. I'm going to change this to zero, and that lines it up. You'll also notice that the end is a little bit higher than the actual beginning of the origin, so I'm going to change that. The center point, or the green plus sign, is at 0 0.184. Simply come in here and adjust this to 0 0.184. Seems like a lot of little details. It makes life so much easier later on if you handle this stuff now instead of later. So with this bone selected, I'm going to come down and click and drag it so that this origin point, the green one, is right where I want this door to be rotating. And we'll leave it right there. I can back out a little bit and Okay. Now on the hierarchy editor, we can see here that now we've got bone one, which is the hip bone, and since the others are connected to it, they are contained within this hierarchy, so it's got a parent-child relationship going on. What we need to do is change the names of these so we know what we're dealing with. Now you may be wondering, how do you actually connect the bones to the object itself? That's where this naming comes in, and it is super important. I'll go ahead and click bone 3. We see it highlights, so we know it's around a small door right here. And when I come over to the properties, we'll see that we've got two names, an internal name and then the name that you see in the hierarchy editor. I like to name them the same thing. Now here's the important part. The internal name is how Poser links the bone to whatever polygons and geometry you want to move. So it's just important to know that as uh, we start developing this because if you only change the name that you see in the hierarchy editor and if you do something like this and you double click on uh, this in the hierarchy editor I can say small door and click OK looks great here but you'll notice the internal name didn't change the internal name is how Poser finds what it's going to move so I like to just kinda come in here copy that come back to the internal name editor and paste that. Something to note on the internal name is you can't use wild characters or wildcard characters like pound signs or money signs, dollar signs, those types of things. And there can be no spaces in the internal name. So if you want to separate small and door, you would do that with an underscore or a hyphen or something like that. So let's come to bone two. This is our big door. So, well, since I'm so darn original, um, big door. I'll select all and copy, come back up here and name that. And this is the only place you can change the internal name for bones. You cannot do that in the pose room, so just know that now. Now for the uh, main area, I'll just say main, and that lets me know that uh, this is the main one for a hard edge object, which I probably won't do a single thing with unless it is an airplane or a submarine or something like that. Okay, we're set to go. The next step is to go ahead and tell the program what we want to be affected by these bones. Simply having them near the object doesn't make them grab the object. So let's come up here and open up the grouping tool. And before I do that, let me go ahead and change views here so we can get into our posing camera a little bit. And something to note, I switched to this very uh, easy to see outline frame while we're building the actual bone structures and moving things around. When we get to this next step, you need to be able to see the object. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to this format so we can see what's being selected. What do you mean what's being selected? Well, that's what we're going to do with the grouping tool. So I highlight that and we see the floor lights up bright red. Well, what's going on here? My little grouping uh, editor opened, off, opened up off screen, so here it is. We'll see that when I click on this disclosure triangle, there's a ton of stuff already in here. This is the area or the regions that textures are applied to that the author of this particular hanger made. So these are all basically texture identification areas. This is how the program, when it imports the, the textures, knows what to put where. You can also see down here that we've got the bones we made. Main, big door, small door. So this is a combination of groups. This is the texture groups where the textures go, not the textures themselves. And then these are the bone groups. So they kind of live together right here. I like to check out objects before I get in there. The hanger floor is lit up. If I go to the hanger frame, 
Let me go ahead and maybe rotate around the scene a little bit. Yeah, you can see the framework in there if I get my mouse off of it. What else do we have? This is a good time to check out where the doors actually are. Um, we've got lights going on, it looks like, and roofs. And there's a side door, zero, one. Let's go ahead and see what's going on with that. So that looks like a frame. Come in here a little bit. I like to know because this makes it very easy to make selections for the bone groups. Let's take a look at uh, side door one. Looks like the main area. So what's this other one? It's like going on a treasure hunt. And that's the exterior frame. So the one that says H side door, I'm not going to be using that. What else do we have? Uh, siding, siding, walls. Here's a door. Let me go ahead and rotate around up here. Yep, that looks like the top part of the hangar door. And finally, we've got uh, the door trim. OK, well, that's good to know. If I come over here to, say, the big door group, which happens to be a bone group now, and select that, nothing lights up. It's because there's no polygons assigned to match that bone yet. And that's what we're going to fix right now. There's a couple ways to do that. One is, let me rotate around my scene a little bit, just a little bit to get it out of the way. With the Add tool activated right here, and we see that because we've got this little plus sign for the marquee, and we've got a marquee selected as opposed to, say, a drawing tool. This allows us really easily to go ahead and simply click and drag and select some polygons. It only selects the front side, so if I happen to drag it across the building, it wouldn't select the lights on the inside or anything like that. But I don't want to actually have to click and drag around all these, although I can and I can subtract the same way. The easiest way is to simply say, let's go add some groups to this that already exist. We know that we've got uh, this door item right here, so I'll click that and we see it light up red. I can add more to it by doing the exact same thing and selecting that trim item. So now this whole thing is lit up and now this is aligned or selected to go with the bone group. Let's do the same thing for the small door. Come down to small door. I'll scroll a little bit for this. And yeah, let's zoom in just a touch. With the small group selected in the group editor, I can come back here since there's actually a texture group set up for that and say, OK, uh, where was that? We wanted to go with door 0. And so that lights up. It looks like the exterior frame of the door, maybe. And let's add another one because we found out there was two. This happens to be the side door one. So we get everything selected right there. With that done, let's see if this is actually working and doing what we want it to do. Let me back out a little bit. We can't check out the rigging inside this setup room. We have to go back to the pose room to do that. And it's actually a nice little safety feature. So we get a warning window that says, this figure contains polygons which are not grouped to belong to a bone. You know which bone it's talking about? That hip bone. The only polygons I've selected to align to bones are the big door and the small door. So knowing that, I'll say, yeah, I don't care. If I wanted the main hip bone to affect everything, I could select multiple polygons. Not a big deal on these hard edge objects. I'm going to select yes. We're in the pose room right now come over to the parameters dial and right now we've got figure 2 highlighted. I tell you what, let's name this hanger just so we know what it is. And that name changes. We'll come over here to parameters. Now under hanger we've got the main body which is what that's named and then we've got main which is that that main bone, the big door and small door. So big door. Let me scroll a little bit here. We can see that's highlighted. Now we know that we are looking at the X, Y, Z axis. This kind of goes along the X axis. So if I grab X rotate, yeah, that thing's working. Now I can leave this down and I can come over here to say small door and that we want to rotate on the Y axis. I can open this up. Hey, life's beautiful. Look at that. If we pop back into the setup room, we'll see that we've got these right here and we can edit and add polygons if we want to later if we missed some because we were manually drawing then they'll be added and magically uh, correctly move out in the pose room right now we don't see the whole building because poser has created two setups the hanger setup and the figure two setup 
and since I changed the name we've got two if I click the other one we'll see that it's just hiding from view right now okay well with that done let's do the next step then let's create some presets for this or morph targets to make life easy I'm going to go ahead and on this uh, small door let's bring this back to zero and on the big door let's go ahead and move this to zero as well you know what actually I want this closed let's go to a full 90 degrees we are going to create some custom morph dials that would allow us to create a simple behavior in this case but I'll show you how we can make a really sophisticated behavior to use say on the big door if we had some kind of passageway that had a rolling door or something like that you'll start to see how this might work okay let's come down with the uh, small door selected we'll do it first this way and we are going to create a custom morph dial let me close this up with the uh, subset selected here we'll come to object spawn morph target and let's name this small door now this is going to be a basic morph that allows us to not try to hunt down where the transformation lies because we can blend any of these together rotation translation scale all this can be affected by the single morph dial so while it may seem like overkill for a simple door opening we'll change this real quickly when we get to the large door and do something kind of fun with that all right the first thing I want to do is click this disclosure item here and uh, you can't see it it's going off the screen let's see if I can select it here still going off the screen settings is what we want this is where I put in some parameter values right here to make life easy I don't want to grab this dial and turn it and have the door spinning around I want it to only go so far so the minimum limit I'm going to set to zero and the max limit I'm going to select to one this means that all the range of motion we're going to create just falls between zero and one so instead of having this dial go spinning out to some outrageous number it's going to stop at one and I'll select OK with that done what we need to do is create some dependencies this morph needs to depend on some of these other functions to work correctly so you can either right click or use this little disclosure triangle again and there's something called edit dependencies right there I'll highlight that and we get this funky little uh, item that shows up here now it's very important that you go through this in a specific step-by-step -step process to see what's going on the first thing we want to do is identify which item we want to go ahead and create the target for well hello we know that's going to be the Y rotate so what I like to do is simply kind of grab the Y rotate right here our small door is set to zero which is the value I want it to be when it's closed as opposed to one which is full open and right now if I click the dial and drag it you'll see it only goes to one that's because in the settings we put a limiter on that so I'm going to say start teaching and click this little button now it says stop teaching and nothing's happening but let me show you how this works we'll select the Y rotate feature and I'm simply going to jiggle it a little bit when I do that right now it's set to two degrees I can go ahead and set this back to zero that's not a problem but we now have this feature to work with right inside of this learning type of uh, dependencies editor that we're working with what I'll do is go ahead and now drag this to one I'm going to take this X rotate and open this door up a lot further now you see the door how it's kind of flying off uh, the building right there we can edit that no problem in the setup room and get the door to stick and, and very specifically right where the hinges would be not worried about that right now so it's opening up 150 degrees that's the value of one I'll say stop teaching doesn't look too dramatic but you see a little graph has been made down here and this is how the door functions right now if we close this up and I grab the small door and we close it we'll slam there it is perfect I don't have to worry which axis it's on or anything like that for things that move like airplanes or spaceships where the XYZ for the main object may be different than the small one well this is how you deal with that by creating morph dials specifically slaved to the object itself so I'd mentioned uh, going in and adjusting this let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm talking about when I use this right now we'll see the door kind of separate and swing away from the building itself let's pop into the setup room 
we're getting a warning that says, hey, you've applied morph targets. Um, if you change the polygon selection, it might mess with a morph target. I'm not going to change the polygon selection, so that's okay. So let's zoom in here just a little bit closer. All I need to do is go ahead with this bone and select it and drag it. And let me do that from the top. Let's be smart about this so I don't have to come back here and fix a boo-boo. Not that I've ever done that before. I, I know you probably haven't. No, I'm sure. So it looks like I have it registered to the door right here. If I turn on figure setup so I can see the other items around it, maybe we go back to the simplified view. I can see exactly where I need to go ahead and to move this uh, small door bone. Let's move it out just a little bit. And I'll set it right, I guess right here. We'll see how that works in the pose room. And we'll come back to, say, our posing camera. Let me scroll a little bit. Use the morph dial. There, that's sitting exactly where it should be. So let me actually prove that by doing something like this. Now we can see it. So it's behaving like it should. OK, perfect. So you get the idea of how a morph dial works. Well, let's do something that's a little more sophisticated now with a morph target on hard edge rigged objects. I want this door to open, so let's come to Body Part Big Door. We are going to create or spawn a morph target. We'll name this Big Door. It pops in down here. We'll adjust the settings as we did before, and I want a range of 0 for the minimum, which would be fully closed, and 1 for the maximum, which will be fully opened. OK. The next thing we want to do is create those dependencies. So I'm going to come back here and right click or select the little disclosure triangle, say edit dependencies. It pops open. We see the master parameter for big door is open right now. And I'm going to say start teaching. So at one, I want the door to be right where it is. On this X rotation, I'm going to jiggle this and change the value just a little bit because what it does is it kind of sets a keyframe. And we've got this object to work with here. I'll go to 1, and let's open this bad boy up. There we go. OK, so that's been done. We see that that has become an animated action. We've got this little graph here that proves that point. If I say stop learning right now, or stop teaching, we can see when I come back in here that if I drag this, then the door behaves, the morph dial. But let's do something a little cooler with this. What if we want the door to actually kind of go away? And this is how you would work with rolling doors or anything, iris types of doors. Let's add another property to this. I'll say start teaching. How about if we get this to shrink on like the Z axis? Um, let's see if that's the correct one. We're going to scale this. And I'll jiggle this real quick. Yep, that's the axis I want. With that set there, I'm going to leave this at 100 got this started um, and actually that should be 100 at 0. So let me jig it, jiggle it here to go ahead and set a little keyframe. When this goes all the way to a value of 1, I want this to shrink up and go away or become very very small. So on the Z scale, I'm going to go ahead and shorten this whole door up. Almost like it's retracting but hey it's the magic of uh, of uh, CG. I guess this is how Ratchet and Clank makes his weapons disappear. Okay, with this done, I can go ahead and drag the morph dial and we see the door contract as it goes up and extend as it comes down. Stop teaching. Now I'll close this window up and we've got a morph dial with a very sophisticated ability now so that as I activate this dial and pose with it, we get this kind of motion in here. It can happen anywhere in the scene. It's like an animation built in an animation if you're working with the actual animations itself. So this is a very cool way to start establishing some of these items working with the rigging capabilities of Hoser and then creating custom morph dials to go ahead and easily make repeatable types of movements and posing with your freshly rigged objects.